Okay, so here we're going to install a partial mounting panel in a TSA freestanding enclosure. Uh, what you're looking at here is one part number. So you've got the partial panel itself. You've got four mounting brackets. And notice that two of them have pins on the top. Those are going to be the top brackets that we use to help support the panel. You've got some mounting panel bullets or fasteners. You've got some clip nuts, self-tapping screws, and then finally uh, the instructions. Now, as long as we are going to mount the partial panel within the frame profile and utilize that as a mounting surface, we don't need anything else. If we're going to install the panel in kind of a floating position, meaning halfway in through the depth or, or the top or the bottom, the other thing that we're going to need is a box of system chassis for the depth of the cabinet. Now we're going to need four of them, and I'm going to do both installs. I'm going to do a static install within the frame. I'm also going to do an install where we're using uh, the chassis. 500 deep cabinet, so it's an 8612, 150 will be my chassis for the outer level. So you'll notice on the frame of the TS8, about every 100 millimeters or 4 inches is an enlarged hole opening. This is for a quick reference guide. So instead of using a tape measure or counting a large number of holes to find your location, you can reference off of the enlarged hole openings. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to install my top bracket first. And remember, that's the one with the pin on it that you can see in the lower right corner there. Uh, the number of screws that you use really is dependent on, on maybe the load that's going to be on the panel or what your preference is. I would say a minimum of two, but you could do three um, as you could go into the side of the bracket as well since it wraps on the interior of the frame. Do the same thing on the other side, and again, you want to make sure, of course, that they're level or the same uh, point, making sure that the bracket that you're using over there is going to be the one with the pin in the bottom. This will help support the panel when we hang it. And now take the panel, and using the slots, you want to make sure that you're hanging the panel out. Now it will kind of sway a little bit until we get the bottom brackets in but make sure that the through holes in the panel are going into the through holes on your bracket. That's how we'll mount it. And then when you put the bottom ones in, instead of measuring, I find it easier just to hang the panel first and then apply the bottom brackets. This to me is just simpler and a little easier than trying to measure down or to count holes when you're doing this type of installation. Put your self-tapping screws in there, and again, these are going to be T25s. We're going to want to do this for either side. The other thing I want to mention is I've taken the mounting panel out, the main full-size panel, to, to make viewing easier, but this does not intrude into the space. Since this is within the frame of the TS-8, you can have multiple panels in like this uh, on either side and still have your full-size mounting panel in, and they will not cause any interference whatsoever. Now I'm going to remove the panel and I'm going to put the clip nuts onto the brackets that I have installed since I know they're in the correct position. These are the fasteners that I will use to secure the panel to the brackets. So you've got four of them. They simply kind of press on in place. And then I'll just reposition the partial mounting panel. And then I'll need to switch out my, my uh, tool bit from a T25 to a T30 because that's the size used for the mounting panel fasteners to go through the panel into the clip nuts in the back. Just do this for either side. If you find that uh, you need to slide the clip nut over a little bit one way or another, that's fine. That's what the adjustability is in there for. This is just a close-up of showing how you slide the clip nut over the bracket. And again, you've got some variability there. Okay, so now we're going to switch from a static installation to if I want the panel to float within the frame or to be outside of the frame profile itself. So to do that, I'm going to install my system chassis. So once you locate where you want the panel to hang, I'll put a chassis on either side for top 
and then I'll have to put also two more for the bottom brackets. Then once you're installed in the proper place, simply put your brackets again using your top brackets with the pin at the upper position. I again would recommend two because that's not going to allow it to pivot. Maybe you put the screw right in the middle, then it could probably pivot on that. So two would anchor it in just fine. Do the same thing on the other side, and that allows me to hang the panel to position where my bottom rail should go. Again, I just find this easier than trying to measure down or to count holes. Now you'll want this chassis, the system chassis, to be approximately in the middle of the bottom of your panel there. So when the bracket is attached, it lines up properly. The other thing you could do is attach the bracket to the chassis ahead of time and then position it. So that might be another way to make it do quicker for you. Now once I'm putting in my uh, fasteners to secure, so I've got my four chassis on, panels in a forward position, and now you can see that in the back I've actually installed my full-size panel ahead of time to show you the multiple layers of what you can do inside of the TS-8 now, especially with these partial panels. Now in another video I'll show you how you can install this and actually make it hinge on one side so you've got a hinging panel, but currently this video is specific to static installations. And then this is what it looks like from the side. So again, you can see multiple layers of mounting equipment inside of a TSA.